From birth through childhood, we've depended on our parents and teachers as we've grown and matured. We are here today because of the help they have given us. We owe them an enormous debt of gratitude. Unstinting Gratitude Ajahn Mahabua and his disciples remained around Ban Hue Sai village, living and practicing in the area for several more years. Through her special knowledge, Mechi Gao was constantly aware of their whereabouts. Their comings and goings never eluded her awareness. In 1953, after the rains retreat had finished, Ajahn Mahabua witnessed a prophetic vision in his meditation. Levitating effortlessly above the ground and poised to address a large crowd of supporters, he looked down to find his aging mother prostrate before him. Peering mournfully into his eyes, she pleaded with him not to forget her. Are you never going to return? She seemed to be saying. Withdrawing from meditation, Ajahn Mahabua reflected on the vision and understood it to be a clear sign that the time had come to help his mother get started on the spiritual path. Out of a deep sense of gratitude for the many sacrifices she had made on his behalf, he decided to return to his home village and ordain his sixty-year-old mother as a white-robed nun. He wished to give her the best possible opportunity for spiritual development during her remaining years. Quickly, he sent her a letter advising that she begin preparing for a Mechi ordination. Ajahn Mahabua asked Mechi Gao to accompany him on his trip home. He felt certain that she would be an ideal companion and mentor for his mother, someone who could assist her in the initial steps on the path of practice. Because Ajahn Mahabua's guidance had made her own transcendence possible, Mechi Gao felt a great devotion to him and an immense feeling of gratitude which she was eager to repay. So, together with two other nuns, she traveled with Ajahn Mahabua and his disciples on their long journey to Ban Tad village. Ajahn Mahabua's place of birth was located several hundred miles from Ban Hue Sai, in Udon Thani province. Upon arriving at Ban Tad village, they found his mother eagerly anticipating her new life. Straight away they set about preparing for her ordination. Recognizing his mother was too old to wander with him through the forests and the mountains, Ajahn Mahabua looked for a suitable place in the vicinity of Ban Tad village to establish a forest monastery. When a maternal uncle and his friends offered a seventy-acre piece of forested land about one mile south of the village, Ajahn Mahabua accepted. He decided to settle there and build a monastery where both monks and nuns could live in peaceful seclusion. He instructed his supporters to build a simple bamboo grassroof sala and small bamboo huts for the monks and the nuns. Ajahn Mahabua then took his mother, Mechi Gao, and a group of monks on a long journey to the southeastern province of Chantaburi, a seaside region of fishermen and fruit growers. There they spent the rains retreat of 1954, encountering an unexpected problem that hastened their departure. His mother and Mechi Gao soon found difficulties adjusting to the new, more humid climate and the unfamiliar food. It was quite unlike the plain country fare of the northeastern region. Shortly thereafter, Ajahn Mahabua's mother fell ill with an undiagnosed ailment. By the end of the rains, her condition had worsened into a creeping paralysis that seriously inhibited her movements. Ajahn Mahabua decided that he must quickly escort his mother back to the familiar soil of Bantad village and seek treatment for her condition there. By the time he and his party finally arrived home, there was a newly erected sala and huts waiting to greet them in the forested grounds of the new monastery. Once back at the new monastery, Mechi Gao quickly went to work. She had always been sensitive to the natural healing properties inherent in wild forest plants. That knowledge gave her an exceptional grasp of traditional herbal medicines. She deftly foraged in the surrounding woodlands for indigenous roots and tubers, local plants to which the old Machi's body was more likely to respond. Using these to good effect, Machi Gao began treating Ajahn Mahabua's ailing mother. Carefully adjusting the proportions of the medicinal herbs to fit her patient's changing condition and symptoms, she nursed her teacher's mother with dedication. Entrusting herself into Mechi Gao's constant care and the therapeutic properties of her herbal medicines, Ajahn Mahabua's mother gradually regained her health. She first recovered her normal range of movement. Then, after a long convalescence lasting nearly three years, she finally regained the full use of her limbs. 
During those first few years, living at Bantad Forest Monastery was extremely difficult. All the basic necessities of life were in short supply. Machi Gao and the other nuns made their robes from shrouds used to cover dead bodies. Their pillows were stuffed with straw that had been offered to the monks. Their sandals were cut from old tire treads. The food was mostly plain and unsavory, just enough to get them through each day. Machi Gao would later find it difficult to describe how hard it was to live at Ban Tad Forest Monastery during those early years. By 1960, the outside world began to impact the forest meditation tradition in a way that forever altered the traditional landscape. Deforestation became rapid and pervasive, forcing the forest monks to modify, forcing the forest monks to modify and eventually curtail their wandering lifestyle. As the geographic environment changed, Ban Tad Forest Monastery found itself in the forefront of efforts to establish permanent monastic communities where practicing monks and nuns could carry on a John Mun's legacy, striving to maintain the virtues of renunciation, strict discipline, and intensive meditation. With his charismatic presence and forthright nature, Ajahn Mahabua became a pivotal figure in efforts to maintain continuity within the fraternity of forest monks, and so preserve Ajahn Mun's unique style of practice for future generations. Displaying impeccable wisdom and great rhetorical skill, he worked tirelessly to present Ajahn Mun's life and teachings to an increasingly wide audience. Practitioners soon began gravitating to Ajahn Mahabua's monastery in hopes of receiving instruction from a genuine master. The influx of seekers eventually transformed the monastery into a renowned center of Buddhist practice. In this process, Machi Gao, with her simple and unsophisticated style of speaking, remained in the shadow of her distinguished teacher, quietly advising and encouraging the women who came to join the community of monastics. As the health of Ajahn Mahabua's mother improved, Machi Gao gently persuaded her to focus fully on meditation. Wanting her to develop a solid foundation in the practice, she impressed the older woman to strive diligently and to wait patiently for the results. The pace of her progress would depend largely on the store of virtuous tendencies she had accumulated from the past, and on the amount of effort that she currently put into sitting and walking meditation. By constantly cultivating virtue and never permitting evil to enter her thoughts, her presence of mind would become clearer and her understanding more penetrating. Eventually, she would realize that everything is created by the mind. The eyes see images, the ears hear sounds, the nose smells aromas, the tongue tastes flavors, the body feels sensations, and the heart experiences emotions. But the mind is aware of all those things. It knows them and thinks about them, imagining them to be something concrete and real. By cultivating spontaneous mindfulness and wisdom, the mind's activities can be seen for what they truly are transient, unsubstantial, and bound up with suffering. Without the proper focus, defilements will drag the mind along in their wake, overwhelming it with their powerful natural momentum. Before one realizes what has happened, lust, anger, greed, and delusion have taken over and presence of mind is lost. To prevent that lapse, Manchi Gao urged the elderly woman to observe her mind carefully and to learn to discern the movement of its defiling influences. Machi Gao's words of wisdom and encouragement inspired Ajahn Mahabua's mother and put her meditation firmly on the right track. As the years passed, her heart developed a solid spiritual foundation. By the time Machi Gao departed from Bantad Forest Monastery in 1967, she had succeeded in placing the elderly Machi squarely on the Buddha's noble path.